Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Homesteading Off the Grid and another morning ramble. I happen to be recording this on a Saturday morning in September. Uh, the school year has started, and I could have slept in a little bit this morning, and I could have come up here a little bit later than I have been as of late. I made it a habit of coming up and talking up the sun here during these morning rambles this week so I can get a little more done during the day. Uh, but I couldn't sleep in this morning because I was excited to get up here and have this ramble because I have just succeeded big time. I have just accomplished something better than any way in which I've ever done this particular thing before. It's a huge success. Um, I mean, I'm not even humble bragging here. You know, sometimes we humble brag, but this isn't a humble brag. This is an all out, full bore, bona fide, me, me, me brag. I just succeeded in building the best hen house I've ever built in my life. And this is not the first hen house I've ever built by any means. And it's not even the first hen house I've built here on our homestead here in Virginia because I built many hen houses over in the Philippines when my wife and I lived over there and we were homesteading out in the jungle over there. Um, now, to what do I attribute this great success? Failure. Absolute, total, and utter failure that at times involved a little bit of embarrassment and ridicule. What is Crazy Lake talking about now? Well, if you've been following the channel, uh, you know that I set out to build a goat house. Um, if you haven't been following, if you're new, here's the backstory. I set out to build a goat house. And I failed. I failed miserably. I didn't frame it correctly. I didn't shore up the corners. It started to lean. It started to slant. Um, I've tried to build goat houses before, and this isn't the first time I've failed. This is the second official time I've failed at building a goat house here on a homestead. So, um, I, I kept going, and it, at some point, it finally dawned on me this was not going to be a good goat house. But I didn't stop. I didn't give up. We've been uh, entertaining the idea of getting more chickens. We've actually been looking for more chickens for the last couple of weeks um, on Craigslist. Finally got somebody who replied to us, and we went out and um, got the chickens yesterday. You may have seen the video. We got four barred rocks and four uh, um, oh, the black ones, astrolopes. astrolopes. Um, so anyway... This was not an accidental success. It was, uh, and there's been a lot of accidental successes and some of the neatest things in it that we, we, we know about or deal with have been accidental uh, discoveries. And I mentioned that in a video I did about using coffee grinds as fertilizers and how it actually repels snails. Um, snails. In that video, I mentioned ivory soap, the soap that floats. That was an accidental success. Uh, the story behind that is, is the guy that was working the churn, you know, they churn the soap much like butter. He left the churn on, went to lunch, came back. He had whipped the, the batter too light so that when the soap came out, it floated. Um, he called in his manager. They, they decided to go ahead and sell the bars of soap. When they went out on the market and people got the soap that floated, they loved it, and they started writing the company about how much they loved this soap. So Procter & Gamble began creating over-whipped batters of soap for the intent of selling the soap to float, which would become known as ivory soap, uh, probably the most commonly recognized bar soap in the United States. Uh, but now that was an accidental discovery. Um, somebody kind of goofed up, messed up by accident. Now, I kind of goofed up and messed up with this goat house not so much by accident, but as a result of just kind of really not knowing what I was doing. Now I'm going to get there, and a lot of people have asked in the comments when they, they watched the video about us getting the chickens and converting this to a hen house if we've given up on the goat idea. No, not at all. Not at all. Um, it's just been put off a little further down the road. We're still going to pursue either goats and or sheep, and it'll be, I mean, it's not going to be like years from now. It's coming, and it's coming sooner than later but for now it's just been put off um, because the goat house was insufficient and it became a hen house now 
there were times while I was building this goat house, I thought about just stopping, just giving up, taking the thing apart, saving the lumber that I could to use, starting over, but I didn't, I just kept going, I just kept going. Um, I saw, started formulating in my head, it was, it could be a hen house, so that's kind of the direction I went, and that's the direction I ended up. But, you know, I wanted to share, I actually brought notes up here today, okay? And it's light enough to read now. The sun's still not up above the horizon, it's on its way. I'm gonna talk it up. Before I'm done here, I will have talked up this sun. This is what I do. Davy Crockett, Grin Down Bears, Crazy Lake talks up the sun. So, um, guys, I wanna challenge you to go out there and dare to be great, okay? Today, this weekend, this coming week, the rest of your lives. Dare to, dare to succeed despite your fears of failure. You, listen, if you don't fail enough in life, you're never gonna succeed at anything. As I've said in another video, we don't drown because we fall in water. We drown because we stay there. Dare to succeed. Go out there and succeed. You know, if you're not happy where you are, if you'd rather be somewhere else, if you'd rather be doing something else, if there's something you've wanted to do, you've had an interest in something, even, you know, is it drawing? Is it writing? Which we've talked about a gazillion times because I do that. Um, is it cooking like my wife dearly? Go out there and, and do it. And if you fail, you might succeed. If you fail enough. If you've given up and you're sitting down and you're saying, oh, it's all this inspirational. You're so full of it. Oh, I hate you. You're... You haven't failed enough. You need to fail some more before you'll find that success. It's out there waiting on you, but you've got to go to it. It's not going to come to you. Now, listen, here's my notes. I brought examples of three failures, big time losers who failed over and over and over and over and finally, finally won. So the first one, um, and we don't do politics here. I have my own views. You have your own views. They may be similar. They may be different. But as you know, if you followed the channel, I believe you and I, no matter who you are watching this, have more in common than we don't. So politics, we don't do it here. Um, religion, we don't do it here. Money, we don't do it here. My family and I have our views on all three of those. We have our issues with all three of those. We keep them on this side of your screen because we may disagree on all three of those points. We'd rather focus on the things we agree on. You know, it, I, I think about this. A lot of folks say, that's wonderful. You're a, a breath of fresh air. And I thought, is it really this uncommon for people to really not talk about money, religion, and politics? Because isn't that how most of us were raised? Two things. No, that's not how most of us were raised. I think it's how a lot of folks who subscribe to this channel were raised. Um, and number two, I thought about it a little bit deeper than that. If you look at it, my wife, who uh, is Asian, she's Filipina, born and raised in the Philippines, lived there for 28 over 30 years. I'm an American, born and raised in America, lived here uh, first time I left the country, I was 35. Um, and it, I mean, I'm just going to be honest and candid with you. It didn't sit well with me that the, t the fact I did leave was to go off to fight a war in the Middle East. So um, after that, after coming home and after certain events and circumstances uh, worked out the way they did, I, I, I left. I wanted to go to other countries. I visited several, but I ended up kind of planting my roots for a while in the Philippines where I met my beautiful bride. Now, if you held the earth like this, and you had this finger, let's say the globe, not the earth, you can't hold the earth, but let's say this finger was on the US, your thumb would be on the Philippines. You cannot get any further away from where I'm sitting right now in the Northern Hemisphere, if you stay above the equator, than by going to where my wife's from, okay? So the cultures are similar in many ways, largely because the Philippines at twice were, was a US territory, after the Spanish-American War and then after World War II, but then also because American culture has influenced the world. Um, you can't escape it. I mean, I don't care how, f you. I've been in the deepest, darkest jungles of Mindanao in the Southern Philippines, find those tiny little sorry, sorry stores like we were joking about yesterday with the hand house showing it looked like one of those little stores, their version of convenience stores. Uh, and you see the big old Coca-Cola signs on the store and they're selling Coca-Cola. Try as you will, you can't get away from Coca-Cola, McDonald's, and Michael Jordan. So anyway, I'm in a marriage, a wonderful marriage, have a beautiful family where I guess from the early 
from the very beginning, we had to learn to focus on similarities because there were so many differences. And then in time, because we formed a bond, which became a full blown, hardcore love, burning love, uh, we began to accept each other's differences that we could. Um, others that are just still a little, you know, um, well, we just don't focus on that. We focus on the commonalities. Uh, we accept each other for who we are and we've got a love like I could have never imagined. And you guys can see it in our videos and I know it because you commented on it. So anyway, with that said, uh, hey, if you're new here, I got a little hint or I've got a little secret for you. Um, I kind of have a tendency to digress. That's why these are called the morning rambles. So now that I've digressed, oh, another secret, I have a tendency to talk about how much I love my wife. So if you think that's sissy-ish, whatever. Okay, back on topic. I mentioned that because this first loser I'm going to talk about, this well, this, first, this guy who lost uh, repeatedly throughout life was a politician. So that's why I bring this up. Okay, at age 23, this guy, he runs for state legislature, loses, and he also ends up losing his job around the same time. Boy, what a way to start out life, no? 23 years young, lost your job, lost your first go around in politics. Um, three years later, you know, he's trying to recover from, from these hardships. He's in love with this beautiful woman, the first true love of his life, and she dies, typhoid fever. So three years after that, um, he, he'd finally made his way into state politics, but he wants to be the speaker of the house there in his state. Loses, loses again. Um, keeps trucking along many years later. He's almost 40 years old. He wants to become the commissioner of general land. The, he wants to hold the office of the commissioner of general land in D.C. Loses. I mean, this guy, it's almost like by this point, people are thinking it's a fluke that he even won one state election and got into politics in the first place. He's barely making a living, you know, just loss after loss. Uh, but he sticks with it. He keeps going. And at the age of 52, this is about 20 years later after his first loss. And he's basically had a very checkered political career. Um, but this has become his career. At the age of 52, he ends up uh, being elected as the president of the United States of America. He reunites the North and the South, and he abolishes slavery. This was Abraham Lincoln, who, despite numerous losses, didn't give up. He kept going, and, well, he finally won, and he won big. 16th president of the U.S., many consider the greatest president ever, or at least in the top three or top five. Okay, we've got a lot of uh, subscribers over in the U.K., um, England, Scotland, Ireland, uh, we've got a lot in England, particularly. Uh, so here's a shout out to them as far as somebody who lost over and over. And we got, you know, folks throughout Europe and Asia, all around the world. Um, at seven years old, this kid, this little boy was sent off to work in a workhouse because, I mean, the family had no money. The father left when he was two. He, he had an older brother. So he and his brother go off to work in a workhouse. Um, it's where he and his brother, they basically worked hard manual labor in exchange for room and board. At nine years old, two years later, he gets out of the workhouse. He goes home to live with his mother. Uh, his mother is insane. She loses her mind entirely, gets locked up in an insane asylum where she would eventually, I mean, she would go in and out at first, but then she would eventually spend the rest of her life in one of these places. So this little kid goes back to the workhouse, nine years old. <clears throat> He and his brother would eventually get out while they're still children and then basically grow up, spend the years of their childhood going for days at a time without food. But they're kids, they're children. They see the good in life. They don't focus on the bad. And we should all be like this. Um, so they, they have big dreams. And this kid devises this grand scheme and this wonderful idea. You know, if we can just make it to America, go to Hollywood, um, I'll become a movie star and we'll be rich and we'll live happily ever after. You know, it breaks your heart, really, to think about a kid living this way on the streets, but this is his fantasy. Well, they make it to America, and they make it to Hollywood, and this guy gets rejected over and over and over. Cannot find work. Rejection after rejection after rejection. But he just kept going. He didn't stop. He didn't give up. He finally got some acting jobs. Uh, it started snowpiling. He kept getting one after another, 
and by the time his career was over, he would be known, and even to this day, remembered as the greatest silent film actor in history. This little boy at seven years old who was sent off to the workhouse, his name was Charlie Chaplin. Now, here comes, uh, a lot of you, especially in the U.S., know of this story. A lot of folks around the world probably know about this story. A lot of you don't, so I'm going to tell it to you. You talk about a ne'er-do-weller, somebody with a checkered career for the longest time, probably, uh, almost his entire life. And it, I mean, it began, he, he, he was brought up, you know, his dad died when he was five. Um, at seven years old, he had two siblings, so there were three children. His mother was often gone for days at a time trying to earn money to feed her three children. She was, you know, a single mother, a widow. Um, at seven years old, by seven years old, this guy, uh, he was cooking for his three siblings. By 10, he was the farmhand. He was growing up on a farm by 10 years old. I mean, think about that. Tiny little guy. He's running a farm because his mom's always, you know, in and out. Uh, she's out there trying to earn some money, take care of her three children, keep the farm. Well, his mother finally remarries, and uh, his stepfather, I guess, wasn't the nicest guy in the world. And so by 14, the kid kind of, well, he leaves, and he goes out and he becomes a farmhand on other farms because he wanted to get away from his stepfather. There was just no love there, so or not much to speak of. Not enough to keep him around. So at 14, he's a farmhand on other farms. Uh, and he's sending money home to take to help take care of his mother and the siblings he left behind. He bounced around, no true security. Uh, by 40 years old, he's basically made, and I, I'm 44, so by the time this guy was just a few years younger than I am right now, um, you know, it's interesting because I've talked about this before. I didn't really have my first big success or success to where I could actually afford to buy some groceries for my family until I was 40 as far as my writing goes. Um <sighs> So this guy, you know, 44 years old, 40, 44, um, he's trying to make a go as a restauranter. You know, he wants to have restaurants. He's doesn't have any money to speak of. He's getting people that own gas stations, letting him to open up like these little, um, little like short order deep fried stuff in gas stations. Um, 10 years goes by, he's still bouncing around. He finally starts to make a foothold with a with a restaurant. Um, it burns to the ground. He he he's he's having probably the most success he's ever had with a restaurant, and it burns to the ground. He loses everything. Keeps going. He recovers from that. He's into his sixties now, and he finally in his, into his sixties because he never gave up. He never gave up. He's running a profitable restaurant. He's paying his bills. He's earning enough money to take care of himself. Well, President Eisenhower, you guys remember him, uh, Supreme Allied Commander during World War II, uh, created and led the invasion of Normandy uh, in D-Day, comes, becomes president after the war. Uh, one of the greatest things he did for us here in the U.S. as far as travel goes and infrastructure is laying out this interstate highway system. Um, so now what used to take days to travel from point A to point B, you can get there in hours. Well, crushed this guy because that interstate came through and diverted traffic entirely away from his restaurant. So at nearly 65 years old, this guy's out of business yet again. He spent his life loss after loss after loss, failure after failure after failure. And, and not because he didn't work hard and not because he gave up, because he did. He worked hard and he never gave up. So he's nearly 65 years old. He's got a social security check for $105. That's all he's got to his name. But he had developed a particular recipe with a certain type of food that he had cooked throughout the years. And he said, you know what? This is really good. I believe in what I've created here. I am not going to give, out, give up. I'm going to go find someone who will buy the rights to this and who will make this in mass. And I'll be able to support myself through retirement. He went to restaurant after restaurant after restaurant with this recipe. Little white-haired old man with a cane, you know, walk, walking around very slowly. He was rejected one thousand and nine times 65 years old slowly walking around across the country took 1009 no's before he finally got a yes to his recipe but he got that yes he didn't give up he got that yes and you now know the story of colonel harlan sanders 
So every time you go into a Kentucky Fried Chicken, and we used to eat Kentucky Fried Chicken in the Philippines. So if you're watching from the Philippines, the next time you're eating Kentucky Fried Chicken anywhere around the world, think about this story because that's why you're eating this chicken because of a 65 year old man who'd lost repeatedly throughout life beginning at the age of five when his father died yet because he never gave up 60 years later after a lifetime of loss failure and 1009 rejections he finally succeeded not only in being able to take care of himself in retirement but in bringing the rest of us the most finger licking good chicken we've ever had in our lives so folks, this is my ramble for this morning. I failed miserably making a goat house, but I succeeded beyond my wildest imaginations in making the best hen house I've ever made in my life. So now I'm gonna get down there and uh, me and Dearly and Daniel, our son, since it is a Saturday and he's not in school today, are gonna put the final touches on that hen house, transfer all of our chickens to their new home. And uh, we'll get some of that on film so we can share that with you. I want to wish each and every one of you a wonderful day. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. And again, I challenge you to go out there and make an attempt at something. Try. Give it your best. And if you fail, get up. Remember, you don't drown because you fall in water. You drown because you stay there. I want you to go out there and fail 1,009 times because you may finally succeed. And I can promise you that when you do, it'll be worth it. I did talk up the sun for the record. It's just behind the clouds. There's your parting shot of the homestead, and we'll catch you for more next time.